Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Mayur Agrawal, faculty for Marrow Endocrinology Super Specialty, and I welcome you all. And we have a very special guest today. In fact, I would say a celebrity with us today. He has secured celebrity of the year. He has secured a rank. He is second rank in INI SS Endocrinology. He is also ranked second in AIMS. So heartily, heartily congratulations from me and from the team Marrow. On the behalf of entire team Marrow, I extend my warm regards and a really big congratulation. You have cracked the toughest exam in your first attempt while doing MD. That's a really big achievement, I would say. And for those who uh, are listening to us, whether you don't know or don't know, at, uh, at present, I believe endocrinology is one of the branch which every MD medicine, MD peds is following. If you see the last year selection ratio, almost 50%, that is every second candidate took endocrinology. He has opted for endocrinology super specialty. So please, I welcome you. So first tell me about yourself. Tell me how, um, where you did your MBBS, MD. So all those things to our, uh, all the delegates. Thank you so much, sir, for inviting me to this interview. Uh, I am Arnab Kalra. I did my MBBS from AIMS Rishikesh. And now I am currently doing my MD in medicine at AIMS Rishikesh. I am currently in the final year of my MD and I have just finished my MD medicine final exams. Yeah. So Dr. Arnab is basically from 2014 batch and he has cracked both the exam in the first attempt. And even he has not finished his MD, he is still going in posting. That is what he was saying. Even after the result, he is going in the wards. So how are you feeling now? Sir, I am feeling amazing. It's just uh, unbelievable. All the months of hard work which have gone into uh, this preparation, it has resulted the right results. Sir. Yeah. So I have been uh, knowing you almost, I would say, for past three years. So it's a wonderful journey with you. So why did you choose endocrinology? Sir, actually, endocrinology is a wonderful subject. I really like the breadth of both the work which can be done in this subject and the breadth of the patient profile which is present, sir. I liked how a small hormone like TRH with only three amino acids is able to make the entire body, you know, run on its toes, run on its shoulders. And similarly, I like in endocrinology, we have a vast array of patients from the neonates with DSTs to older patients with osteoporosis and other the endocrine changes of aging. Similarly, in the terms of progress in this subject, we have uh, both the clinical aspects of things to the core uh, biochemistry and the molecular biology. Even in the newer drugs, we have many advances in this subject. So because of this wide variety, I really like this subject and I chose it for my super specialization. Okay. So I believe with your answer, you have a exposure of endocrinology, which most of the PG students don't have because they don't have endocrine department. So was there endocrine uh, posting for you or have you worked there? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm extremely grateful. In uh, AIMS Rishikesh, we have a department of endocrinology. Kalyani ma'am is the head of department and I was posted there for one month, sir. The senior residents in the department also helped me a lot and they really guided me uh, developing my approach to the subjects. So was it during the posting when you thought that, okay, I'll go into endocrinology or before that also you thought, no, I have to be an endocrinologist? Sir, I was not so sure. Actually, uh, till about November last year, I was confused. I was mostly confused between rheumatology and endocrinology in terms of subjects. My thesis guide, uh, Venkatesh Paiser, he's a rheumatologist. So that was an inspiration. Uh, he's an, sir, he's an inspiration for me. Uh, uh, the endocrinology, even prior to the endocrinology posting in medicine, we see many patients whom we have to evaluate for hypercalcemia, hypocalcemia, and also we see a lot of diabetes and uh, hypothyroidism. So all of that and the approach, uh, I think uh, it led me to the subject and the endocrinology posting was like a blessing, which, you know, told me more and exposed me to the breadth of the subject. So. Okay, so you have told me regarding your inspiration for the rheumatology, but you have not mentioned who is your inspiration for endocrinology. Sir, in endocrinology, I have been blessed. Uh, in my family, my father is an endocrinologist and also I have been exposed to the subject since I was a child, sir. So that is, uh, he's definitely an inspiration, but uh, in terms of choosing a subject, many things have to be taken into account. And I'm yeah. grateful that during my MBBS and MD training, I was exposed to the other subjects also. So I could uh, develop an approach to them also, sir. Yeah, so I was expecting that answer. 
for those who don't know uh, dr arnav is son of dr sanjay kalra who is role model for all of us he is past president of esi and he is one of the finest teachers for endocrinology in india not only in india internationally he is one of the best speaker so yes i was expecting this answer secondly uh, how was your exam whether uh, after giving exam did you feel that okay i'll be able to crack this because see in, when you are fresher you have already too much load of the work and not only like you don't study just endocrinology you have to study everything and this was ini ss which was mainly focused on super specialty so how was your exam and whether you are uh, after giving exam whether you felt that you would be able to clear this uh sir actually uh, so till 31st of march i had to do normal duties we have only two units in medicine so that included alternate day opd duties emergency duties everything i had to do in april i had my pre prof exam sir uh, i am lucky that the inss theory exam was in between my pre prof and prof exams so uh, for the pre prof exams i had to study entire medicine and in between i got around 8 9 days prior to inss where i could dedicatedly focus on endocrinology after the paper my paper had gone well but uh, everyone else was also saying that they have done 70 questions correct and everyone and uh, like because it was a high scoring paper so i was not so sure whether how i will perform relative to others uh, i did not have much time to think about these things also because after this paper 8 days after the paper i had my prof final exams so i had to get back to preparing for them uh, so that's how it is sir okay so that was less stressful from uh, thinking point of view from uh, thinking about the results but yes from the exam yes, point of view it was really stressful yes, so very stressful. Uh, what i felt that uh, after seeing the question also that the uh, level of toughness the difficulty level was slightly lower this year what did you feel that whether these question can be answered just from harrison or whether williams was required and out of 80 question what were, what do you think was the profession uh, what was the proportion of the question and difficulty level of the question for this year i9 sir in inss there are 30 uh, 80 questions sir 50 are pure from endocrinology 30 are from medicine in medicine also 5 6 questions are from endocrinology so we have approximately 55 or so questions from endocrinology sir out of those 55 i think maybe around uh, 40 or so could be answered maybe 40 45 could be answered direct from harrison sir many topics which are asked they are like recent updates changes which have occurred in guidelines for example there was a question on management of graves of thalamopathy sir about pediatric osteoporosis question was there sir so in such questions uh, i think uh, and they are important topics so doing previous years being aware of the uh, frequently asked topics and knowing them in slightly higher detail will be helpful sir okay and uh, what do you think especially for those who are preparing for ini ss because it's mainly super specialty based as you have told 55 questions were from super specialty endocrinology and for the neat ss where there are more seat so the problem with the aspirant those who are appearing for the exam the main problem is what to prepare and how to prepare so what would you suggest in what was your strategy sir uh, that's a very good question one issue is that even for neat ss and ini ss now the cutoffs are going very high like in this exam out of 80 the topper got 74.67 marks which is a very high number sir even my own marks were 69.67 which is also quite high sir even in neat ss the toppers get around 135 140 type questions correct out of 150 so there is very little margin for error and in all of these exams you have we have to know all the important topics very well sir regarding preparation uh, because my final exams were uh, like they were in the same time frame when i give my nss so a lot of my medicine preparation happened alongside the uh, final exams sir we cannot so much specifically prepare for medicine because it's a vast subject but i think it helps to be aware of the previously asked questions and also it helps uh, to have a general idea of the important topics and to have some small set of notes or something which we can revise frequently just before the exam because the questions they will ask they have very close options and if we have not frequently revised or if our concepts are not that clear it's very easy to make mistakes uh, regarding endocrinology i think it will require at least 3 4 months minimum of dedicated preparation for the subject because it's a vast subject and uh, everything has to be covered and what things i don't ask in the exam they end up asking in the interview so uh, we'll have to study everything only sir ultimately everything you have to read i agree so did you read williams like uh, cover to cover did you read some important topics just the tables or nothing from the williams just the harrison 
sir uh, reading cover to cover is definitely not possible i did read the important um, the tables i read sir tables and figures from williams and also in some uh, cases when the uh, some question which was asked in that topic if a few paragraph or some section of williams which was important i read that sir yeah so and regarding marrow videos uh, will you uh, did you get the time because you were in final year so it was really a time scarcity so did you get an opportunity to watch them and how much uh, of the videos have you watched and how many times uh sir uh, so i have watched the videos uh, so some videos like your mcq discussion videos and the previous year discussion videos i think i have watched them maybe three four times sir because they are so important they cover the really important points and they tell where the examiner is likely to trick us and how do we deal with those situations which i think is very important for the exam the other theory videos uh, i have watched a lot of them sir but i only watched them once and i once i took the notes or i was aware of the subject i did not watch them again sir yeah so uh, most of the students whom we talk they usually do the same thing they they would watch the video make notes and then go back to textbook and see them especially what we have tried is that we have we have tried to uh, make a clinical scenario like how you see the patient that is how we are framing the question not only that we try to slightly twist the question again and again so that you know what is the catch point in the question yes. and how what what exactly the examiner wants you to know that is our aim so that you don't go wrong there especially in that limited time you have to perform in that yes. anxious uh, atmosphere yes, it, it becomes really tough so is and one more question that everybody ask is how did you manage because now we are seeing so many freshers getting into super specialty top ranks are from the freshers mostly now so how did you manage to get uh, these like time management is really tough because you have to do posting you have to do all your work it's not like you will sit and study so how did you manage that uh sir that's a very good question uh, so my strategy was a bit different than others first thing we have to realize is that especially for an mcq based exam there are certain facts which are essential and we have to be able to recall them very fast uh, in the course of the exam so in the exam it's an 80 question exam we get 90 minutes the 50 60 questions which are easy we have to answer them in the first 30 minutes or so it should not take more than 5 or 10 seconds to recall that fact so for that i use the help of software uh, like anki software i use sir in that i used to make flash cards for the really ultra important uh, points and facts which i have to know and that is how in a relatively short span of time i was able to ensure that i can recall the most important facts uh, with a reasonably good 90 95% accuracy and i think that helped me a lot in the exam sir so uh, what was your strategy for a day before or the last minute revision uh, sir so i had those flash cards so approximately it used to take me around 10 seconds 8 to 10 seconds to review one flash card which was one important fact uh, what i had done is sir uh, in the 3 4 days prior to the exam i had sorted out the uh, maybe around 600 500 600 important facts which have been previously asked and in the related topics which i don't remember or where i am making some mistake like in genetics of eochromocytoma or other such uh, you know difficult to remember topics i revised them sir i also revised the uh, uh, the previous year question sir and i watched the videos uh, the previous year the discussion videos which you have sir i did that mostly i that's how i prepared uh, one day prior to the exam sir yeah so uh, there are too many one liners too many facts to be remembered and that should be recalled within that short span of time especially yes, units that is what i believe units and numbers yes, and yes, are really tough to uh, recall at that moment so how did you do that because that's yes, a common sir. question of all the aspirants sir so that is where the software helped me sir because flash cards help me otherwise in endocrinology almost all of the cutoffs are single digit numbers with some small difference after the uh, decimal even when they ask these uh, case based scenarios which they asked in this exam there also if we don't know the cutoff we cannot interpret the result which they have given and then how will we mark the answer or know what to answer sir yes so that is also what uh, we have tried to focus in all our videos in all our uh, q and a uh, videos where we give all the units we twist the question we say uh, what we tell you what is the conversion factor so that is really really important which you may miss when you read yourself so that yes. is what we were trying to focus and maybe that would help all our aspirants all those marrow users it would help in the exams 
and then uh, i would also like to ask because ini is a two phase in for the aims so yes. for the interview what did you do what extra thing you did sir for the interview uh, again uh, luck was on my side it was in between my theory and practical exams so thankfully it did not clash with any of my exams uh, sir i practiced i actually practiced uh, so in the session as you had told sir that they will ask about introduction and thesis so these topics were in my control that this will definitely be asked so i practiced i think my introduction i wrote five six times and i practiced how how i will say it so i don't stutter it so that when they ask me i can without any hitch i can this confidently say uh, thesis also i practice two three times how I will, how i will describe my thesis the findings and they asked me so many questions on the thesis so i think that helped and the initial uh, the confidence uh, helps in answering the rest of the questions because they ask very tricky and questions from any part of endocrinology so at that time presence of mind is essential sir yeah so that is why uh, we every year we do this uh, for, for the students who have cleared their theory we do a practical session where we get insights from those appearants who have appeared previous years and that insights we give to the students who are going to appear for the this year so that this will help and this will give them an extra edge and you feel slightly comfortable in that period and yes. then uh, before closing we would also like to take your feedback on the videos that what did you like and what should be improved sir i in the videos i really liked that uh, you covered the important points uh, which were essential and you also told where we are likely to make mistakes because those are the only ones which are actually asked in the mcq exam also i liked the question bank sir and the way it was clinical and it uh, tested logic and everything sir so i like the whole platform and the app it is very smooth i think i have been using it since third year of mbbs i also use it for the pg prep so uh, it's all very nicely made sir okay so you are a maro user since long yes sir so any any of your favorite topic that you felt okay this topic is very well covered and this topic is uh, this needs further polishing sir the one topic which i really liked was when you had mentioned uh, how do we do genetic testing in uh, this patients with the pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma that if this clinical manifestation is there we go for first genetic test is uh, this and so on and so forth sir uh, that i really liked i also liked how in thyroid you explained that which test actually has to be done which way, which test we generally write but we don't actually need to do and they don't help so much so uh, these these are really well covered sir okay and any feedback for us to get as ourselves improved uh, sir it's all really nicely made uh, one thing is sir if the recent the way pattern is changing uh, some focus on sir recent updates uh, would be helpful sir okay so thank you for that feedback so i'm and yes before we close one more last question i feel you will be uh, taking aims only but it's an open call for you whether you are going for aims pgi or jipma so what is your preference uh sir this time jipma does not have any seats so options are only aims and pgi uh, there are two seats in aims delhi sir i will prefer taking that sir so you will be choosing aims delhi yes obviously yes. that's a one of the most prestigious institute and uh, it's uh, your father also did from that so it's a legacy thing also so obviously i believe that you would be choosing and uh, so again a heartly congratulation and before we close any last message you want to give for the future aspirant for the future endocrinologist uh sir for everyone for who is preparing for the exam i think it's important to be focused for the exam to know what is essential to know and to know that really well it is much more useful to have a 90% 90 95% recall and accuracy in the essential ultra important topics than to have 60 70% recall of all the topics sir because that is finally what uh, matters in the exam and what helps in the end sir yeah so rightly said it is not only the quality it mainly the quality not just the quantity which will help you to crack this exam very yeah. rightly said. so thank you very much for giving your valuable time after handling all those uh, congratulation call you have taken such an uh, time for us thank you and congratulation thank you. again thank you sir